started. Is anybody, um, and I asked this a few minutes ago, but we have some, some new people um, that just walked in. And, uh, but has anybody got a chance to watch my little 11 minute micro lecture on perspectives? Um, if you haven't, it's on Moodle. Uh, 11 minutes, I try to clarify some things. I'm gonna spend one minute on it today, then we have to move on. Um, because we have uh, an exam next Wednesday, right? All right. So remember, guys, perspectives, perspectives is, it may seem weird now, but it will make more sense when we get into individual joints. It, it's going to help us understand a lot of illusions, OK? Simplify, keep it simple, keep it simple. Instead of kiss, keep it simple, stupid, I'm gonna do kick, keep it simple, Campbell, and I have dyslexia, so it's okay that I spell it wrong, all right? Keep it simple, Campbell. Perspectives, bottom line, what you see, what I see, and what we must both see. It's as simple as that, okay? With perspectives, with perspective, I'm training you how to not see things from just your view, because that's what we want to do. The magician, does he really have magic? He sees things that you don't see, but yet we're all seeing the magic trick, but you know there's something going on there. Human movement is a lot of illusion. So I need to train you, introduce you to perspective so that we can further develop those illusions. What do you see? You see sagittal, no problem. I see frontal, but we would both see sagittal globally because that's a fixed reference. And don't freak out on the test. I'm gonna ask you, what do you see? What would I see? Or what would the rooms, what would we both see in the room? I'm not going to leave you hanging and give you some, you're watching, I'm watching, and just say, what's the plane? I can't. That's not enough information. What do you see? That should be a three foot putt. What would I see? That would be a three foot putt. What would we both see? Cool? All right, let's move on. First exam is next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Friday, I'm going to post a video lecture that I'm going to record tomorrow. That's going to be on bones, joints, geography, stuff that's not confusing. Why? Because five months ago, Ms. Carol Trosclair arranged a meeting from people to come into kinesiology, and I'm kind of uh, um, the face of that for her son, Scott. So for those of you that know Ms. Carol Trosclair's son passed away 10 years ago. He was a kinesiology major. We have a scholarship in his name. And uh, he was the first ever 100 on one of my exams. And so he was a good kid. And so I do what I can to help her family raise money for his scholarship, which goes to Kinesi Majors. So when Ms. Carol Trosclair and the dean come calling, you answer that call. Okay? But the lecture Friday is just going to be geography, bones, articulations, joints, classifications, just very straightforward stuff. I figured if there was a video to record and post, that would be the one. Okay? This is what I would like for you to do. You have options. This is what you're going to be accountable for for your first test. Sagittal plane movements and position relative to anatomical of these. So your options are stand up, move with me as we go through these, knowing that I'm recording myself and you could rewatch whatever you want. Or option number two, 
Campbell, I don't like your video. It's archaic. It's, it's, I, I can't follow it. Feel free to take out your phone and video yourself. So you could either move with me to feel what's happening so that on the test, I, I encourage you to move. Or if you're like, I'm not a mover, you're free to record or you're just free to, free to listen. Okay? So if you would like, if it helps you to practice, stand up and we're going to do all of the different movements and I'm going to explain how those names come about and we're going to practice position and motion. Okay? Who wants to stand up? Don't be shy. Yes! Thank you. You know what's the biggest fear in the world? And they say public speaking, but it's, it's, it's secondary. The biggest fear in the world is the fear of being embarrassed. And public speaking happens to put you in a position to be embarrassed, all right? You might be a little embarrassed, that's okay, but that grade won't be embarrassed, regardless of what you choose. All right, let's start from the top. Cervical vertebra. We're gonna get into more detail about the cervical, but it's a slinky that can bend and twist. For our test, all we care about is the cervical sagittal plane and an anatomical position. This is the right side, this is my left side. So this is the bilateral axis of my cervical vertebra practically, and I can get into fetal and I can get away from fetal. So chin to chest, cervical flexion. I am now in a flexed position, cool? Chin away from chest, I have cervical extension. Now I am back in anatomical position. However, go back chin to chest. If I have extension just a few degrees, I had extension, but I'm still flexed because I'm in a position based off of anatomical that is more in the fetal than anatomical. We're good? Let's start back in anatomical. Let's go chin more away from chest from anatomical. That was extension from anatomical and I'm in an extended position. We're good? Go back to anatomical. That was flexion to anatomical. What's my position relative to anatomical? Anatomical. All right? So we'll go through a whole range of motion. Flexion from anatomical, extension to anatomical, extension from anatomical, flexion to anatomical. We're cool? Yes, ma'am. Flexion, extension, is motion. Easy to use position. Face it. Absolutely. Okay? Trunk. Guys, the trunk is just a denser version of my neck. All my cervical has to do is hold the stuff in my head. It's not a lot, a lot of hot air. The lumbar and the thoracic have to hold all the stuff on top of that, organs and muscles and ribs. So it makes sense, it's, it's, it's a, a denser slinking, okay? But it follows the same rules. This would be ribs to pelvis, trunk flexion, like doing a crunch. Trunk flexion from anatomical, now I'm flexed. Trunk extension to anatomical, and then trunk extension from anatomical. You feel that stretch? It's because those muscles that are in the front are being lengthened as you extend from anatomical. Here I'd be in a flexed position. Here I would be in an extended position. If somehow I go further than normal, that's what hyper means. And I could have hyperflexion or hyperextension beyond my normal range of motion. Good, any questions about that? Shoulder, this one's tricky because of ESPN, all right? Anatomical position, what would get me in the fetal? This type of motion, all right? So this is shoulder flexion, okay? My elbow might be extended, but this isn't about my elbow, <laughs> it's about my shoulder. So let's do just the right. Right shoulder flexion from anatomical. Now I'm in a flexed position. Let's extend the shoulder. We're gonna have extension, but we won't go all the way back to anatomical. Let's go halfway. Right shoulder extension. I'm still flexed. I had extension, but I'm still flexed because my position is based off of anatomical. 
My motion is based off of feet. That was in the little review video. Okay? From here, let's extend. Extension to anatomical. I'm going to go on the side so you can see. Remember the view? You're going to see it from the side. Extension from anatomical. Now I'm in an extended position. All good. Flexion to. Flexion from. Extension to. Extension from. Starting to get the habit of things. Okay. Elbow. Fido and out of fido. This should be the easiest one, right? Let's do the left this time. Left elbow flexion from, left elbow extension to. We talked about how there are a few joints where anatomical position is all the way at the end of a row. So from anatomical, you can't go down the extension road because that's not allowed. You have a, what we call a hard endpoint. Bones are smacking up against bones. So the elbow can flex, have flexion from anatomical, and then you're in a flex position. How much you're in a flex position? Well, that's what goniometry is. I flexed 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 90 degrees. All that is is how far did you travel west? 10 miles, 20 miles, 30 miles, 100 miles. That's all it is. Wrist. Here's one that could travel east or west. Okay. And this, I'm glad we're doing the wrist now, because watch this. Let's do bilateral wrist flexion from anatomical. Okay? Follow me here. This joint right here is not wrist. That's called your radial ulna joint. So what I want you to do is keep your wrist at what you perceive as a 90 degree angle, and then rotate your forearm where your fingers are now pointing back at you. Okay? So in other words, you should have your right hand fingers pointing you forward to you and your left fingers pointing back to you. We're all good? Both of those wrists are still flexed, is what I want to try to show you. So if I do this, that's bilateral wrist flexion. Because flexion isn't about fingers going forward or fingers going back or this going out or this going in. It's about, did my wrist get closer to fetal or further away from fetal? This is flexed. This is still flexed. This is still flexed. It doesn't matter. This is extended. This is extended. This is extended. It doesn't matter. Because it's about the wrist. Who's the person that's saying it's all about the base or something? Come on, you know this. You know it's all about the base. Yeah, no trouble. No, that's not it. All right, I stop. Hip. Hip follows the same rules as the shoulder. Do you have a question? Oh, bless your heart. Thank you. I got. I got this. I chase butterflies. No problem. Thank you for bringing me back. Okay, wrist flexion from anatomical. Wrist extension to anatomical. Wrist extension from anatomical. Wrist flexion to anatomical. Okay? Now, this is going to be hard. This is going to be like this. So what I want you to do. Pronate your left hand, meaning your fingernail should be facing forward on your left hand and your fingernail should be facing back on your right hand. Okay, we're good? Concentrate. This is going to be tough, but you can do it. I think this will help prove the point. Bilateral flexion from anatomical would look like this. Does everybody see what I did? Bilateral extension to anatomical. Bilateral extension from anatomical. Flexion to, flexion from, extension to, extension from. What position are both of my wrists in? Are they in the same position or different positions? Different. Team Edward or Team Jacob, man, one or the other. If one is flexed and the other is extended, are they in the same position? No. no. Why would they look like they are? Because bless your heart, we're used to windshield wipers kind of moving in the same way. 
So sometimes our bodies want to say, ooh, windshield wear, or ooh, they're all doing the same thing. That's the illusions that I keep talking about. So helping to understand perspectives can help us say, whoa, my left one is closer to fetal position. It's flexed. But my right one is the furthest away from fetal we could possibly get. It's extended. They're not in the same position. Okay, are we good to move on? Any follow-up questions? Is this being helpful? Good. <coughs> hip. Guys, the hip follows the same rules as the shoulder. But the illusion is the hip, when you flex kind of when it looks like it's moving, and it is, kind of comes towards your belly button. The shoulder, when it looks like it's moving, it is, goes away. That's okay, because joint motion has nothing to do with any of that. Nothing to do with any of it. Getting in the fetal would not flex my hip. Hip has nothing to do with my knee. Has a lot to do with my flexibility. This is hip flexion. So let's go through a range of motion. Left hip flexion from anatomical. I'm flexed. Left hip extension to anatomical. Left hip extension from anatomical. Now you don't have a lot of extension range of motion. 15 degrees maybe. So you know what your body does? If it's trying to get your foot more back, it starts to cheat. You start to move your pelvis back. It's natural. I'm gonna teach you how to look for that. I'm gonna teach you that your body has tricks it does. If it's trying to get something back, up, left, down, it'll move other things to help with your functional circle of reach. Okay, I'm in an extended position. Flexion to anatomical, flexion from. Extension to, extension from. Good? Follows the same rules as the shoulder. The knee. <coughs> Follows a similar rule as the elbow, but to get in the fetal, in anatomical, my elbow is gonna flex where my hands go forward, my knee's gonna flex where my feet go back. And that's actually why people confuse the similarities between the rotations. They'll say, this has to be internal because my feet came in. And I'm like, Gee. but I'm gonna teach you how to see these things. But in the sagittal plane, knee follows the same rules as the elbow. In the fetal, like if your heel goes towards your butt, if your heel goes away from your butt, extension. So we have anatomical position, flexion from anatomical, flex extension to anatomical. And for joints like the elbow, the knee, the radial ulna joint, if you are all the way at the end of a road in anatomical, it's okay to say that you are in that position because you can't go any further. So that's why someone may say, my knees are fully extended or in, in, in anatomical, they're extended. It's just because you can't go any further. You're all the way. Unlike the wrist. I can't say my wrist is extended right here because I could travel further down that road. But I can say my elbow is extended in anatomical because I can't go any further. Does that make sense? Hopefully that clarifies some of that fast and looseness with, well, why can we say my knee is extended in anatomical? I'm like, that's a great question. It's because you can't go any further. Yeah, it's a great question. You, we have that t t Teletubby thing, Tell, you know, yep. Okay, no ankle on your first test because the ankle has two different forms of fetal, plantar and dorsot. So I'm trying to keep it simple so that we can practice and understand the verbiage so that we can go on to more complex topics. Y'all could have a seat. Yes, ma'am. So what a great clarification. Elbow and knee, and there's gonna be other, a couple others as we get to them, but for the first test. Elbow and knee. They can be flexed, no problem. Get more in the fetal from anatomical. The only way they can be extended is in anatomical. Think of it like that. And the loophole there is, can't go any further back. 
I would love to say extended from anatomical, but there is no from anatomical because of the way the endpoints of those joints are. Okay. Man, y'all asked some good questions. Was, was that helpful? Guys, that is going to be a majority of your test. Identifying where a joint is at, how a joint is moving, or how did I have to move to get to two different joint positions? Okay, so you said with the elbow that they need, it's like this is anatomical, mm -hmm. this is also as far as it can go. If it were to extend past that point, that would be hyperextension, right? Okay, I'm just trying to. What was the last part? Like, if it were to get to the point, yeah, well, what was the last part? It would be hyperextension. Yes. What was the last part? I'll, I'll, this is such a, a, like, no excuses, man. I show up to work every day. But I weeded last yesterday in my yard, and, like, my allergies are a little acting up, so I have a little fluid in my ear. So I wanted to make sure I heard every word you said. All right. Position. Extended. How would she have to have moved her cervical vertebra to get there. Motion, so give me a motion. Extension. Extension. And that's actually a great point. Don't, advice for my test, don't make the question anything other than what the question is. So in other words, if I'm asking you about joint motions, don't go into planes and axes. If I'm asking you about planes and axes, you don't go into joint motions. I'm not saying you can't go there if it helps you to answer the question, but always bring it back to what I'm asking. Position. Good. How would she had to have moved her cervical vertebra to get there? Flexion. So, from here to there, cervical flexion. From here to there, cervical extension. From if she started it anatomical and went there, cervical flexion. What's her position? She's flexed. If she started it anatomical and she went there, cervical extension. Where is she at? Extended. Guys, it's that simple. But you know what we didn't do? Flexion is a decrease of an angle. I'm not saying it's not. But boy, you can be trapped if you're hunting and fishing for angles that can change with other positions of our body as we move. So I'm trying to bring it back to the purpose. Getting you in the fetal, getting you out of fetal. And when we get into other planes, they will have purpose. I just think the easiest one to start with is sagittal because we have so many things that are helping us get into a ball. That's why the ankle has a type of flexion. The knee has a type of flexion. Have you ever wondered, like, man, why do we have all these flexions? Because they all serve the same purpose. And I am a purpose-driven learner. I have to know why. <laughs> That's the only thing that makes it sink in. I used to... It's not that I didn't like it, I understood, but, you know, Brian, don't ask those questions. Just, you know, just learn it. And I'm like, it don't work for me. It doesn't work for me. All right. Shoulder position. Good. Is that her right or her left? Her right. Is... Motion, guys, somebody's going to ask me this on the test, and I'm just going to have to politely say, I can't answer that. I taught you that. Is it your right or left, or is it her right or left? Hers. It's the person you are analyzing. You can become that person if you wanted to mimic it, but that's your right shoulder, just like it's her right shoulder. So on the test, if I do this, and you say 
Dr. Campbell, whose arm is it? I can't answer that. I'm giving you information. You need to understand that it's not your left, it's my right. The, the example I gave a couple weeks ago is amputate right leg. And, and several doctors who are working long hours amputate their right and not the patient's right. This is your right humerus, and I know you had lab where you had to identify sides of bones. So if this is your right humerus, this would be your right shoulder, your right elbow. Even though the humerus on the lab table might have been to your left, it's still a right. Ooh, Campbell's preaching today. Okay, check out page 18, you guys. This also brings it home. And I always, you know, one of the reasons I kind of customize this stuff is because there are so many different <coughs> variations of these verbiages. And I like to explain why things can be confusing. There's not one governing body over fitness. There are thousands of different fitness certifications. Do you think they all use the same verbiage? Of course not. So that's why some of this stuff is kind of confusing to us, is because we got infinitely many sources. And my background as an athletic trainer, as an exercise science major, the human side, and then my graduate studies in physics allowed me to kind of merge and kind of filter out what's really happening. And so this is a great example. Great example. I took this straight from a, I'm not going to name it because I don't want to hate on them. And it's not that they're wrong. I'm not saying this is wrong. I'm saying it can be confusing without context. We study human motion, but no textbook has movement in the book. <laughs> it's, a, it's a book. How do you get movement? And so you'll have things like flexion, extension. But guess what? Your eyes are just seeing a position. And so that's why we struggle with position. Because I'll say, hey guys, what's this position? And your instinct, your the little... Pavlov part of your brain wants to say that's extension because the book told me when I'm here that's extension Yes, no or maybe so Guys what position is my wrist flexed some students would say well, that's flexion and it makes sense why they would say that. Because in their mind, they see the little picture that said this was flexion. But what I'm trying to tell you, and I know you guys are getting it because you come to class, you ask great questions, is that I can have extension and still be flexed. I can have flexion and still be extended. It's not all or none. It's nuanced. Human movement is nuanced. The people you're going to work with are nuanced. No two snowflakes are the same. Good gosh, no two humans. Not only no two humans are the same, each of their joints are not the same. I got one ear higher than my other. I got one leg longer than my other. I got one joint that has different range of motion than my other. And if all you do is carry around a hammer, you better hope that your problems are all nails. And it's not. It's nuanced. You have to be able to figure things out, to be able to help people. And every single one of us want to help people, whether that's physical education or coaching or therapy or fitness studies, helping people exercise. Heck, even if you want to work in the fitness industry, that's about people. So we have to understand people more than the average person because it's going to make you better. It's going to make you better. And a better understanding of kinesiology means you're more marketable. You get hired over others. You get into school because you're going to understand. You're going to be able to see things that the average coach or the average fitness person can't see so then you can help those people in ways other people can't help them. 
That's powerful. So that's why this is important, okay? I know you know that, but I like to preach. Look at this. <laughs> Can you tell where I edited it in like my caveman fashion? Because I'm not very good at computer stuff. But again, what I did is I took a, I took something that was in a traditional textbook and I added context. All they did was give this and that as if it was all or nothing. And so what I did is I added the context of flexion from, extension to, extension from, flexion to. How would this come into play? I'll, I'll give you a couple examples. But if you're in working with athletes with injuries or therapy, you know, understanding that I have pain with 10 degrees of internal rotation. There's a wreck 10 miles down the road. Where is that? What road? From what context? So by saying I have pain with 10 degrees of internal rotation from anatomical, whoa, now I know exactly where the wreck is at. I have weakness at my wrist at 30 degrees. 30 degrees of what? 30 degrees of flexion from anatomical. Ah, now I know exactly where I'm at. 30 degrees extension from anatomical. Or you could say I'm fully flexed. I'm at the end of that road. And I have pain at 5 degrees of extension from fully flexed. It gives you the power of communication. North of I-10. South of I-10, North College, South College, context, man. These are some long roads. Make sense? It helps us be better communicators. All right, this is the stuff that I'm going to lecture on um, on Friday. So I'm going to record my lecture and post it for you guys. Once I know the exact time that I'm going to lecture, I'll post it. If you guys can and you want to come, you're more than welcome to. Okay? It'll be tomorrow morning sometime. Because my lectures are a hoot, man. I wouldn't want to miss them if I want to get paid. Range of motion. We talked about the prefix hyper. So range of motion is literally your how far of a road can your joint travel in any given direction. But we have to communicate. I'll, I'll give you an example. Some people who works at, a, at either a clinic, athletic training, who's used goniometry before, right? Goniometry before. So with a goniometer, it's just basically a little angle measure. And there's Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes people will have it straight and they'll start at 180 and say, I have 30 degrees of flexion from 180. But some people will subtract the 35 from 180 and say, I have, uh, oh gosh, Campbell, I didn't know I was going to do math today. For 145 degrees of, uh, what's zero? What's 180? You know, it kind of depends. So that's why, remember, I'm not teaching you joints in terms of decreasing or increasing an angle. So it's very similar. Instead of getting confused with a global angle with goniometry, you could say, um, I had 35 degrees of flexion from anatomical. I had this many degrees of extension from anatomical. I had this much degrees of flexion uh, when I was extended. I had this many degrees of flexion when I was extended. I had um, this many degrees of right transverse cervical rotation from anatomical. There, there's no misunderstanding that. There's no misconstruing that. 
the directions were precise, the directions were communicated, because what it did is it gave us all a starting point, and you were properly able to communicate how far down the angular road you traveled from that specific starting point. Now it keeps coming back to if you're trying to give someone directions, you have to know where they're at. You have to know where they're at. Hey man, we're waiting for you. Oh dude, I got lost. Can you help me find you? Sure. Where are you at? And that's what anatomical position does for us. It gives us a reference of where are we at so that we can better communicate where are we going and how do we have to move to get to new positions. Okay? This will also be on your test. However, you will not have to identify. This is just to kind of um, introduce you to, um, we've already introduced and developed the sagittal roads, flexion extension, but I want to introduce you to common frontal roads, ab and adduction. I'm not asking you to identify them. Just know that ab and adduction are common frontal plane Roads. Um, it, it's, a, it's another word for lateral flexion. I'm going to get into that. Uh, but if you think about it, if, I, if this is fetal, I could get there sagittally, but technically I could get there frontally. Okay. So for the test, all I need you to know is that these two are common frontal plane motions. These two are common transverse plane motions, and that way when we get into joints that do that, it's not new words you have to associate with. So again, what I am not asking you to do is identify any of that stuff. Outside of these two hang out in this plane of motion, and these two hang out in this plane. And I don't know who named those things, but ab and adduction, God, that's, it's like uh, growing up, we had twins. They looked nothing alike, but their names were Heath and Keith. So they sounded so much alike, people would flip their names. They looked nothing alike. So it's the same with ab and adduction. I'm gonna emphasize that. Like guys, the reason people miss this more than anything is those two words sound so much alike. It's like confusing, like you wouldn't confuse a duck and a goose. But if their names were similar, that was so ridiculous. All right, while I have you, because every second is precious, let's do some planes and axes practice. Cool? All right. Right shoulder, global reference. So right away, you know if I'm asking, what do you see, what do I see, or what do we both see, okay? Global reference, give me a plane and an axis of my left shoulder. Don't say it right away, because I want everybody to think. I want everybody, to, it's like spoilers, no spoilers, okay? Anybody watch Ahsoka show last night? God, bro, don't aren't any, don't aren't geeks like me. It's all right, play cool. Come talk to me after. But it's so Star Wars. All right. Was it this shoulder? No. It was this shoulder. My left. Cool. What plane was this motion happening in? <coughs> Frontal. Okay. Would it have been different if I'd have said, how do I see it? No. Okay. What axis? Anterior posterior. Guys, those will always match. Anything spinning frontally, whether it's how you see it, I see it, or we all see it, has to be about an anterior posterior axis. Ooh, what a great question. 
So, man, y'all really do have good questions. And I'd tell you if it was a bad question. Like, there's no such thing as a bad question. That is a lie. I'm joking. I want you to say what I taught you to say. But, but there's a reason for that. It's not because I'm the um, you know, Nick Saban of anatomical kinesiology. For those of you that don't know, like he's very you know, my way of the highway. It's so that we don't have, it's so that we're all on the same page. It's so that when you're studying with someone, you're not using Z and they're not using AP, right? So even though there's different names for different things, the concept of the thing is there and we need to refer to it by the same name. And it is a really good question. <coughs> what about my right shoulder? What was happening there globally? Sagittal. Okay. Now, perspective. Globally, if I do the exact same thing, I still saw the same thing, but you guys didn't. You guys didn't. So, from the room's perspective now, the room, what do we all see? Global, what do we all see? We see my right shoulder spinning in the front. That's what we all see. I still see my right shoulder spinning in the sagittal, my sagittal. My left shoulder is now spinning in the room's sagittal. That's what we all see. The side and side of class, sagittal plane. We all see that. So again, it might seem confusing, but it's not because I'm going to tell you the perspective. I'm going to say, what do I see? What do you see? Or what would we all see? Cool? Y'all want a couple more practices? All right. I'm not going to ask you, I'm just going to tell you because we're running out of time, but I, I want to take as much time as we can because the test is next week. Transverse for both. We both see the same thing. I see transverse, you see transverse, and we both see transverse. Room see, we all see the same thing. Okay. So on the test, if I do this and I ask you for plane and axes, and you say, Dr. Campbell, what perspective? It's irrelevant because they're all the same. So that's the example where I don't have to give perspective when everybody's seeing the same thing. All right, watch this. Transverse. Still my transverse, but now what would the whole class and everybody see from the room's perspective? Frontal. Think of it like a basketball. And the basketball would be spinning like this. And it would be spinning about an axis here. And that axis would be going through the front and the back of class. And the spin would be perpendicular about it. Okay? One more. I may be dizzy. Getting old. Absolutely. Globally, it would be sagittal. That's what we all would see. That's what the room would see. The room doesn't care about my perspective. North doesn't care what I think. North is north. And north is north. That needle points the same no matter how, how I go. It would be a bilateral axis. Okay, so the axis is just with whatever plane you're saying. They're married. Okay. Yeah. So watch, think of it like this. So even if it's still wearing, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. So look at let's check it out like this. Polar. Right. Okay. My polar, because this is still the top of my head, mm -hmm. but now I'm in the rooms side to side. 
I'm in the rooms bilateral, thus why I have sagittal plane rotation from a global reference. Because the room doesn't care if I'm doing this or if I'm doing this. The room is like, would you roll forward or roll back <laughs> from bilateral axis? And again, is it confusing if you don't understand perspective? Probably. But if you understand when I say from a global perspective, from the room's perspective, it's either bilateral, <laughs> AP, or polar. And then when I say from it's my perspective, my bilateral, AP, and polar move with me. This is still my side to side, even though it's the room's front to back. And I'll leave you with this. Perspective is really, really important because eventually we're going to get into some freaky stuff. Man, there's some freaky things happening in the human body. I'm telling you. I'm going to eventually show you, and without perspective, you may not understand something like this. Flexion extension. This is a left humerus, left arm. Okay? Check it out. Flexion extension. I'm going to show you how this, without moving this at all, this could go from flexion extension to abduction and adduction. And you'd be like, Brian, you've been vaping too much? But I'm going to teach you how from here to there. But what happens if I externally rotate my shoulder and do the exact same thing I just did? We have to understand perspective. So it may not seem like it means anything now, but I promise you it's going to mean something later. Yeah, we're going. Ooh, now or later, Joe.